In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a simple job queue with Python and Postgres. And this is useful if uh, you just have a small uh, volume of jobs that you need to process and you don't want to uh, introduce other dependencies into your stack and you just want to keep things simple. All right, so I'm going to walk through the script and explain how it works and then we will do a quick demo at the end. So at the top we have our imports and then we have a job config data class here which has uh, four properties, uh, poll interval, max attempts, retry interval, and batch size. We also have a job data class here which maps to a jobs database table and this has the fields job ID, job data, job status, attempts, last error, run at, created at, and updated at. And then we have a job status enum, which has three statuses, pending, success, and failed. All right, so next, uh, this is where we initialize our PsychoPG connection. Uh, and then we have a function here, which takes a job object and uh, we simulate a long running task where there is a chance of an exception. So uh, one out of three times, uh, the job will succeed after a second. Uh, and two out of three times, a random failure will occur. Uh, and here we have a run job function, which takes in the database cursor and uh, the job object and we attempt to run the task and if it succeeds then we will update that job to success and we increase the attempt by one and we update the updated at to now and uh, for the where clause we set it to this job id now if there is an exception then we will pass uh, that exception to this handle job error function. And so this function takes the database cursor, the error, and the job, and uh, it will check uh, the number of attempts. And if it's less than our max attempt configuration, then we want to retry this job. And to do that, uh, we will update job status to pending. We'll log the error, increase the attempts by one, set the run at to the job configs retry interval. So if we say we want to retry every 60 seconds, then it will retry uh, 60 seconds in the future. Uh, and then we update the updated at timestamp. And the where clause is the job ID. Now, if we did reach the max attempts, then we just want to set the job status to failed. And then we also log the error, increase the job attempts by one, set the updated at to now, and the work loss is the job ID. Uh, now, this is the get job fields method, and we're just looking on the job and getting all of the property names off of the job, and then just creating a comma-separated string. Uh, so here's our get pending jobs function, which takes the database cursor, and then the return value is a list of jobs. So here we're calling that get job fields function to get our field strings, and then uh, we're executing this query here. So we're selecting those fields from jobs where the job status is pending and the run at is less than or equal to now and we want to order it by the job ID uh, so that we can process the first jobs that came in and we want to set the limit to the batch size uh, and then we have a for update skip locked so this part is key because this is what allows us to use Postgres as a, a job queue and have multiple 
uh, workers processing the jobs without uh, duplicating the work. Um, so the way it works is that when we make this query, uh, it'll lock those rows so that uh, other processes can't um, get access to these rows until the transaction is finished. Um, and then down here we have our main function, which is a while loop. And we initialize our cursor here. And uh, I'm using this row factory attribute here uh, with this class row method, and we're passing in our job class. And what that does is it automatically maps our database rows to our job data class. And uh, this is a feature of PsychoPG3 um, and not PsychoPG2. Uh, so if you were using PsychoPG2, then uh, you wouldn't be able to do this. You'll probably have to use one of the other cursors. Uh, so here we are getting the pending jobs, and then um, we are looping through those pending jobs and then passing it to the run job method where we pass the cursor in and the job, and then we commit here. So we commit it at the very end, and that's important because um, that's what will release the lock on those rows. Now, if you were to commit anywhere else in the script, uh, that could lead to uh, some weird bugs because um, you are releasing the lock and then now other processes can have access to your rows. So it's important to commit at the very end of each cycle. Uh, now, if there are any exceptions that happen in here, then you will see that error here. Uh, and then we have a time.sleep uh, and then we're setting that to the uh, job config poll interval. And then here we are executing the main function. All right, so uh, this is our um, SQL file for creating the jobs table. So uh, we have our job ID, which has an auto increment and we set it to primary key, job data, which is text field, and we can put uh, anything there. So it could be string or serialized JSON, and then this is our job status, our attempts, which we're defaulting to zero, uh, last error, and uh, our timestamps. And then I also have this uh, helper script here, which will help us to test our uh, job queue. And all it does is it just loops and it inserts five jobs uh, into our job table. All right, let's demo the job queue. So first uh, we are going to want to, if you haven't already, generate a virtual environment. Uh, I already have it created, but I'm just doing this to um, demonstrate how to do that, and then uh, we'll do uh, pip install, uh, make sure we have PsychoPG3 installed, um, and then uh, I'm gonna create a database, I'm gonna call it jobdb, and then I will run uh, this file uh, to create the job table. Um, so now if I go into here and have a look at this table here. Uh, and then you can see that the table has been created. So let's go back out and um, let's start a worker. And you can see that it is running every couple of seconds. Um, Okay, now let me do a split screen here and then uh, and I will run the script to insert jobs into the table. And you can see that uh, we're now processing 
these jobs and you can see that some of them are uh, succeeding and some of them are failing and then after a while uh, it will retry okay um, now let's go into here and see what happens so we have three jobs here that have reached our max attempts right so uh, and then we can see the the errors here um, but these two have succeeded and it took only one attempt and these have failed um, well three times so uh, now if I want to like retry those jobs then I can just let's see where um, job status equals failed so those are the three uh, now if I do um, update jobs set job status equals pending where job status equals failed um, all right let's try that I can see that uh, the job um, worker is processing those jobs now. So if I select start from jobs, you can see that uh, these have uh, increased. The attempts has increased by one. So now these are at four. They've all happened to succeed. And uh, the last error is logged here. And you can also see uh, the run at times are a little bit different because these got processed a bit later and uh, yeah now I also want to demonstrate that the uh, for update skip locked feature is actually working so I'm going to start two workers uh, here and then I'm going to insert jobs into this uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna run this a couple times so uh, like three times so now you can see that uh, both of these workers are pulling uh, different jobs right so it's it's not gonna over it's not gonna step on each other's toes here uh, because of that uh, for update skip locked And then let's go and um, yep. So some of them succeeded, and uh, some of them failed. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can see that they didn't pull the same jobs as they were working on them. And that concludes this video on how to build a simple job queue with Python and Postgres. If you are interested in more web development content, check out my website at fullstackbook.com. Thank you for watching.